wanted to make this short video to give some advice to people who are going to be teaching mathematics for the first time. I'm not sure if I've made a video like this before. It's been a while if I have, but I thought I would make this and put it out there because maybe someone out there on the internet is looking for advice. And I do think that this advice can help you. So this applies to everything, right? If you're teaching high school, college, university, whatever, if you're teaching math for the first time, I think this can help you. If you're already a math teacher, this can probably help you too. So the first thing you should know when teaching is that you need to go slow. Okay, that's that's the first piece of advice I have for you is go slow. So write slow, make sure your pace is good, make sure you don't crowd the board. So So when you're writing, when you're writing on the board, pretend this is the board, you wanna to learn to write like this and look at the class, okay? Because when you're facing the board, if you get in front of it, the person sitting there can't see what you're writing, right? And remember, your goal as a teacher, your job as a teacher is to teach the material in the most effective way possible and help the students learn, right? Your job is to help them learn. And that means teaching in the most effective way possible and also you know, inspiring them to learn, getting them to want to learn. That's part of it too, right? So. Your job is to help the students as much as possible. And that means help them learn. Helping them learn means teaching effectively and, and inspiring them to learn, getting them to want to learn. You know, why are they learning the math? You know, really get them to learn and going slow and writing clearly on the board and not hogging the board is important. So watch your pace, right? Watch your pace, watch your presentation, make sure they can see everything. Do a good job, right? The second thing you should do as a teacher is watch your temperament. You need to be professional. You will have rare situations, maybe even the first day of class, where a student speaks to you in a way that perhaps you don't appreciate being talked to in that way. And it might not be intentional. Realize that different people have different ways of communicating. So as a teacher, as a professor, you have to be professional and you have to respond in a professional manner and in a polite manner. So be positive, be polite, smile, you know, and, and realize that students are, there, are just there to learn. So if a student speaks to you in a way that you feel is inappropriate, let it go, right? Let it go. I, I've known situations where teachers have perhaps a bad attitude with students and, you know, be a professional, realize that students are, are just there to learn, answer their questions and be a good human, right? Don't, don't be a jerk, you know, try to remember when you were a student, when you were learning, try to remember what it's like to be in a classroom because if you're a math teacher, you also studied math. So try to remember what it's like to be in their shoes, right? When you were a student, you probably had less money. Maybe you lived with your parents. Maybe you had roommates. Maybe you didn't have a car. Maybe you were poor. Maybe your life was more chaotic than it is now, right? Students are probably younger than you are. So they have less money. They have less life experience. Um, they have less experiences. They, they know less about life, right? A 45-year-old professor knows a lot more about life and has a lot more experience than a 22-year-old college student. So remember that. Remember what it's like to be in their shoes. So be forgiving. That's another one, right? If a student doesn't do the homework, you know, let it go sometimes. You know, if they tell you that they didn't do the homework because they were lazy, appreciate their honesty, right? Don't be a jerk, be understanding. Um, you know, again, there's a difference between a 22 year old college student and I'm just using 45 as an example and a 45 year old college professor in maturity and intellect and life experience. So be more forgiving than you normally would. Realize that they are just students, right? And realize that they are just there 
because they're trying to improve their lives, right? That, that's a big one. I used to always think about that because when I went to college, <clears throat> I was trying to change my life. I was trying to improve my life. I wanted to get, you know, a college degree so I could make enough money to have a place to live and sometimes order pizza on the weekends. That's all I wanted. I wanted just a simple life. I just wanted a regular life where I could afford to eat and afford to live and had safety and shelter. That's just basic human needs. That, that's all I want. That's all I wanted as, as a student. That was my goal. You know, that was my goal. And so realize that most people, many people in college, that that's all they want. Even if they want more, that's fine, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting more than that. But everyone is there voluntarily because they are trying to improve their lives. And so you as a teacher, your goal is to help them improve their lives in some way. It's not just to teach math. It's, it's to help them improve their lives. You know, this is, this is their college experience, right? This is their college experience. This is the one time in their life that they're in college. They're going to look back on these years and they're going to say, these were my college years. And so you want to make sure that you give them a memorable experience. That is your job as a teacher. So it's, it's not just to teach, right? It's to give them a memorable college experience. So that when they're your age, when they're 45, 55, 65, they can look back on their college years and they will remember you as their professor. So the things you say a lot of times leave a big impact on these students, even, even little things that you'll say. <clears throat> so make sure you watch your words, stay positive. And yeah, that, that's my advice for new teachers. You know, Go in there with a positive attitude and just remember that they are there to learn, be forgiving and try to do a good job. Don't be a jerk when it comes to grading. This is one that a lot of teachers, you know, they're very strict graders. I, I'm against it. I, I don't agree with you. If you're a teacher and you're a strict grader, you can grade the way you want to grade. It's your classroom. I respect that. Um, I tend to grade on the more lenient side, but I still grade fairly. I'm not going to like give away A's. That, that's a whole different discussion. So be forgiving, but also be firm, right? Be forgiving. You know, if they make a computational error and it's a calculus problem, and it's a small error, don't take off half the points, right? No one likes that. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, ah, oh, the teacher sucks. Why'd they do that? They're going to hate you. And then why would you do that? Why would you want to cause that pain to someone? You might say, well, they should know this. They should know how to add two plus three because they're in a calculus class. Yeah, they should, but they don't because they made a little mistake because maybe they were up all night studying. Maybe they have a baby at home. Maybe they have problems with their family, right? You don't know their life circumstances. You don't know if their situation is harder or was harder than yours. So you don't know their circumstance. Be a little bit forgiving when it comes to stuff like that, when it comes to late homework and, you know, be a little forgiving. I, I remember one time when I was a student, it was a stats class. And I left my homework at home. I, I did it all. I was I stayed up all night finishing it. I rewrote it twice, made it all neat, stapled it. I was ready to turn it in. And I left it at home. And I told the teacher, hey, I forgot my homework at home. Can I bring it tomorrow? And she said, no. And I was like, wow. And I walked away and I, I thought nothing of it. But I thought, wow, that's kind of harsh. Like, I didn't get mad. I was just like, wow, that sucks, you know? And it was an honest mistake. It's not, it's not that I didn't do it. But the teacher was probably so jaded by students lying about the fact that they forgot their homework or about students, you know, because students will, they will try to get away with a lot. They'll be like, oh, I didn't do the homework. That, that's going to happen. But you have to let it go. Because most of the time, most of the time, it's an honest mistake. Yes, you will get those students who try to beat the system. Oh, I just thought of one I had who will always try to like, you'll get students who will miss every test and they'll always ask for a makeup test. I mean, you, you will get people, you will always get someone who tries to manipulate you or manipulate the system. You'll always get cheaters. You'll always get people who are trying to abuse the rules and break the rules, right? There's, there's always those people. It's going to happen, right? When you teach hundreds of students over the years, thousands of students, you're going to get some bad ones, right? It's like if you walk into a room of, of a thousand people, there's going to be some bad people in that room. Right? It's just going to happen. It's, it's the numbers game, right? So it's going to happen with students. You're going to get some who try to manipulate the system and try to, you know, 
get away with everything, not not cheat, not take tests, you know, all kinds of stuff. But that is not the majority. The majority of people, the majority of students are, are there to change our lives. So you, you don't want to create rules and regulations and become a jerk because of one or two people, right? So give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And those people who come along, you know, those, those rare students who try to beat the system, who don't do the homework, who cheat, you know, um, don't, don't let those situations change who you are as a professor. Always stay loose, always be on it, be polite, be respectful, be accommodating. You know, if, if someone needs an extra day for the homework, give it to them. <clears throat> so stuff like that. And that's something that I think a lot of teachers never learn. But the students will have a better experience and you'll have a better experience and they'll learn more. You know, if if you're if you're really hard on your students, they're not gonna they're not gonna want to learn. You know, think about it from from their perspective. If you're going to a class and your teacher is evil, <laughs> right? Why would you want to go to that class, right? So just just realize that, you know, that, that's how it is. And if you're a student and you're watching this video, which, which I doubt, but let's just say you're still watching this video, I think we're at 11 minutes here. This is supposed to be a two minute video. And your teacher is like that, just know that it's because of, you know, society. If you think about like the DMV, the DMV in the United States is the Department of Motor Vehicles. This is, I'm going off topic here, but I'll talk about it. So the DMV is called the Department of Motor Vehicles, and it's where people go to get their driver's license here in, in the United States. And the, typically the people who work at these places are very jaded. Why? Because they deal with the worst, right? They deal with people coming in and complaining, so they become jaded. So as a teacher, you cannot become like the people who work at the DMV. Now, I'm not saying that the people at the DMV are bad. But in many places they are. I've been to some DMVs, which are great. But a lot of times in a lot of states in the U.S., not all states, but in a lot of states, they're like that. And so don't let your negative interactions with students, with those few students, ruin it for the other students. So be accommodating, be nice, write clearly, teach slowly, do a good job. And, and again, the best way to do that is to realize that they're just people. They're just there because they're trying to improve their lives. I think that's all I want to say in this video. Um, if you want to learn math, check out my courses and books. Links in the description. Follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Subscribe to my channels, The Math Sorcerer, Math Sorcerer Espanol, and The Internet Sorcerer. And again, if you're new to teaching, it's a beautiful career. It's a beautiful job. Best job I ever had. It's great. I love teaching. Um, I love people. It's fun. Um, and you get to do math. So yeah, have fun. Stay strong.